everyone. So recently, and by recently, I mean the day I filmed this video, someone sent me an interval through my through my suggestion forms, and the interval is this: the indefinite interval of arc sine x times the natural log of x with respect to x. And today, this is the interval that we are going to be evaluating. And before we do that, I would like to mention that, as I as I said earlier, I have a problem suggestion form in the description, which means if you want me to do a certain problem, you can send it through here or in the or in the comments. I'm pretty likely to see it. So let's start this interval. So first, I would like to introduce a substitution. And we will let x be equal to the sine of theta, which means dx will be cosine theta d theta. So let's plug everything in. Arc sine of sine theta will be just theta. Natural log of x will be natural log of sine theta. And don't forget our dx, which is cosine theta d theta. And now we will use integration by parts. So we will differentiate theta because that's just one and we'll integrate natural log of sine theta times cosine theta. Good. Now how do we integrate this? Well, we'll integrate natural log of sine theta cosine theta d theta. If we let u be the sine of theta, du will be cosine theta d theta. So we have the integral of natural log of u du and can evaluate this no, you can evaluate this using integration by parts, but you will use a method known as prove by knowing what the answer is to get an answer of u minus the natural log of u minus u. I won't put down the plus c because it's not the end yet. And then we just plug in sine theta. So we get sine theta natural log sine theta minus sine theta. Okay, so we get theta sine theta natural log sine theta minus theta cosine theta plus okay so we will integrate okay so we have negative negative so we have positive the integral of sine theta which is just negative cosine theta if i am right let me think for a second yeah i believe i'm right and then negative the integral of sine theta times the natural log of sine theta d theta. Let me just check real quick if I didn't do any mistakes. Yeah, okay. So now we'll focus on this integral, namely the integral of natural log of sine theta times uh, of sine theta times natural log of sine theta, which we will call i1, and we will also call our original integral i, because given a few things, it is useful. And I can't seem to open my marker, please. Thank you. This will be our integral i. Okay, so let's focus on our i1. So our i1 will be the integral of sine theta natural log of sine theta but then sine theta can be written as the square root of one minus the cosine square theta using the fundamental theorem of trigonometry i was about to say calculus but it's trigonometry oh yeah and with respect to theta and now we'll introduce the substitution you have i u equals cosine theta which means du will be negative sine theta d theta and what we can do is we can just multiply by negative 1 and then multiply again by negative 1. So we get negative the integral of, well actually I factor the square root out of the logarithm to get a 1 half. So we, we, so we get negative 1 half integral of, okay so this is our d theta, so we have natural log 1 minus u squared du. And then we'll again use integration by parts. So, what we'll do is, we will differentiate natural log of 1 minus u squared, and we'll integrate 1. 
So integrate one is we get u and differentiate natural one minus u square, square we get one minus u square in the denominator and negative to u in the numerator. So we get so determine the negative, so we get negative one half u natural log squared, uh, u natural log one minus u squared, plus the minus cancel, so we get plus two times the integral of u squared over one minus u squared du. And now, ju just to be clear, we factor it out d2. And now we'll call this new integral i2. So our i2, will be equal to, well, integral of 1 minus u squared over 1 minus u squared du. And now we'll introduce a trigonometric substitution. Well, my substitution was good. Substitution, okay. Never mind. So we get u equals the sine of alpha, which means du will be cosine alpha d alpha. So we will get the integral of, okay. We'll have a sine square of alpha. In the bottom, we'll have a co cosine square of alpha, but since it's divided by, uh, since multiplied by the cosine of alpha, we'll have simply the cosine of alpha. But then sine square of alpha can be written as 1 minus the cosine square of alpha. Yeah, but wait, actually, what's that about to just... Oh, wait, no, actually, sorry. So, so we had sine squared alpha over cosine alpha, d alpha. But then we have, okay, no, sorry. I, I was about to say that we could rewrite it as secant theta, tangent theta, but I was wrong. So never mind, Cos one minus cosine squared alpha, d alpha. I got lost in my, in my work. And then we can just divide through by the cosine of alpha. So we get interval of secant alpha minus interval of cosine alpha, d alpha. And then we just get interval of secant alpha is equal to, is famously equal to, or rather infamously equal to, natural log actual value of secant alpha plus tangent alpha min, uh, yes, or minus, minus the sine of alpha. I will, put, I will put down the plus C because it's not the end yet. And then we can rewrite our secant alpha plus tangent alpha as 1 plus the sine alpha over cosine alpha because then we have our u equals sine alpha which means not du why are they talking about du which means that the cosine of alpha will be equal to the square root of 1 minus u squared so we get natural log of absolute value of okay 1 plus u over the square root of 1 minus u squared minus u because sine alpha and we'll put down the plus c yet. But then we can simplify the argument of our logarithm a little bit because 1 plus u over square root of 1 minus 2 squared is equal to 1 plus u over square root of 1 minus 2 square root of 1 plus u using a difference of squares and it's one property then. And now 1 plus u over square root of 1 plus 2 is just square root of 1 plus u. Hold on, my Razor fails. Yes, yeah, square root of 1 plus u. And we can combine the square root to get 1 plus, square root of 1 plus u over 1 minus u. If that's right. Yeah, that's right. And then we can just factor out the 1 half, well, the power of 1 half outside of the logarithm. So we get this. And then what we can do is we can plug this value for i2 back into the interval that we originally got, right? Yeah, so we get, and don't forget that it's all multiplied by 2, so we have natural log actual value of 1 plus u over 1 minus u minus 2u. Is that right? Wait, you think for a second? Yeah, that should be about right. And then we can plug this value back into our original integral i1. So we get, wait, oh, okay, so we have a negative sign out front. So don't forget that we have a negative 
So we have negative. Oh, wait, actually, we forgot to convert back to theta, right? Yeah, we did. Okay, so, so let's do that real quick. So yeah, u equals cosine theta, which means, yeah. Okay, so we'll have negative one half cosine theta, natural log of sine squared to theta, the one half cancel out. And we have negative cosine theta, natural log of sine theta, plus natural log one plus cosine theta over one minus cosine theta, and then minus two cosine theta. And now we are ready to plug everything back in. So now we get, don't forget that we have a plus sign attached to everything, so we, a negative sign, so we have plus cosine theta natural log of sine theta. Then we have negative natural log, actually we can make it positive and invert the argument, so we have one minus cosine theta over one plus cosine theta. Minus two cosine theta, but that is plus, so we have a plus cosine theta. And actually, just for aesthetic purposes, we can rewrite this as 2 times natural log of the square root of this quantity because that is exactly the tangent, well, the half angle tangent formula. So we have 2 natural log, natural log, absolute value of tangent theta over 2. And put down the plus C, and this is our answer oh wait no this is not our answer actually we have to convert back to x <laughs> sorry for giving you guys false hopes but we have to convert it back to x yay okay so x is equal to sine theta so let me just write it over here so we have theta will be our sine x okay so we get x or the sine theta r sine x natural log of x minus arc sine x times the square root of 1 minus x squared because cosine theta is square root of 1 minus x squared by the fundamental theorem of trigonometry. Again, I was about to say calculus. And then square root of 1 minus x squared for the cosine theta. And then plus natural log of x square root of 1 minus x squared plus 2. Yeah, actually it was better to keep it as 1 minus cosine theta. 1 minus cosine theta over 1 plus the cosine theta. So we get natural log absolute value of 1 plus uh, 1 minus the square root of 1 minus u square, uh, 1 minus x squared, sorry, over 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And oh, sorry, I wrote the plus c right there. And now we can put down the plus c and this is now our final answer. Okay, so this was yeah, pretty nice interval. Yeah, I have no, nothing more to say about this. So, this is a video thing. I really love it. Don't forget to listen to this video. Bye.